This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. Hello and welcome. Joining me to make sense of these uncertain economic times is a very special guest, Dr. Norbert Walter, Chief Economist and Head of Research of Deutsche Bank. Absolute pleasure to have you with me, Dr. Yeah, Walter. Let me start with your worldview. When you look at the world economy right now, are you a more worried man today than you were yesterday? And do you think you'll be a more worried man tomorrow than you are today? Uh, I'm worried already for a while. Uh, there is no reason to uh, kind of get uh, into panic. But um, uh, these serious times will continue for a considerable period. Hmm. Let's start with a broader basis in terms of the major concerns that the world mm -hmm. is looking at. It is all centered in the U.S. first off. So let's start with the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, economy. What is the state right now? Do you feel there will be some kind of stability turnaround in first half of 2009? I'm worried that people misinterpret the growth rates that we still have as something that gives the trend rate of the U.S. economy. We should understand that the American government and the central bank have undertaken exceptional measures that cannot be continued uh, to avoid a recession. So we've got some consumer spending because the government has sent around big checks to the consumers. They don't have the money to do this after the third quarter. And it's very obvious that with an inflation rate of 5% in the US, the US central bank, by pushing down interest rates to 2%, uh, is something that is not sustainable. Uh, I believe there is a risk that the American central bank unanchors inflation expectations, which we have won so dearly over so many decades. And I'm unhappy that uh, too few analysts still have a memory of the 70s when the world was really plagued by high in inflation rates mm. and still know how difficult and painful it was to get rid of this inflation. I would welcome if the most important central bank for the world would worry more about inflation and not only concentrate on the difficulties banks are certainly in. Mm. I want to talk about dollar and you make a very strong statement, uh, Dr. Walter, perhaps the strongest that I've heard, that the dollar will continue to remain weak for the next five years. It may not be five, but it is two, two and a half for sure, and it might be five uh, if the Americans don't really turn around now and understand that they've lived beyond their means and they have to correct it if mm. possible now and have to accept the pain that goes with it, then uh, indeed uh, the adjustment of international savers to, to move out of the one investment they have uh, really favored over the last five years a lot, namely government, uh, US government bills and bonds then we would, the world would be in, be in trouble, and the Americans in particular, because they would have to accept much higher interest rates for their government debt. Mm -hmm. At this moment in time, they get the money for as low as 4% at a time when inflation in the United States is 5%. So I don't understand, I frankly must say, why savers would save in a currency that offers an interest rate that is below the inflation rate. Dr. Walter, how much extent of damage could happen? I know it's very difficult to gauge it because these are not, mm -hmm. you know, just registered normal entities times. and normal times. But how much of damage could possibly happen? People all come off with a number, some higher than the others, and it keeps getting mm -hmm. more and more. To your mind, what is a reasonable assessment of that number? Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm quite happy that my view is not shared. Therefore, my hypothesis will be truly tested. Most of the peers in investment banks do believe that with the overvaluation of the euro today, the trend of uh, the dollar will be strengthening mm -hmm. rather than weakening. And the last few days, we saw the dollar strengthening. Uh, so I, I really hold an outside view. Uh, that's something that helps, and I strongly hope that the Americans improve the situation and they get some help from another very important factor that, of course, is important for today's uh, world, namely the oil price. If the oil price, due to the cyclical downswing in the world economy, would decline a lot, and if by accident we get a good monsoon, we get a good harvest, and food prices would go down, then of course inflation would go down without monetary policy getting more, becoming more restrictive. And then the rescue could, so to speak, come from that side. 
I pray that this happens. But if it doesn't happen, we are in trouble. And I would warn all those investors who have single-mindedly invested into the dollar that this risk exists. Mm. I want to talk more about oil. There has been a, almost a 20% correction in oil prices over mm -hmm. the last uh, couple of uh, weeks. Mm -hmm. Is that giving you a signal that oil has already peaked at $147 per barrel? Right now, it might not crack considerably, but at least will stay at about a $120 range? My, my understanding is that oil will remain expensive for the medium and long term, number one. Secondly, I had a lot of difficulties when the oil price uh, in a period of clear downturn of the world economy, certainly in the United States and in Europe, still was climbing like crazy mm -hmm. uh, from a level of a good 115 or so to a level of almost 150. This was difficult to understand because there was no hurricane and there was no specific terrorist attack in Nigeria. There was no particular problem in Russia. So we had uh, obviously a, a speculative bubble and this speculative bubble probably now is undone and I indeed do believe that there will be more energy efficiency in the future because people understand there won't be cheap energy anymore we have to we have to go for smaller cars we have to go for more efficient driving we have to insulate our houses much better than we did in the past this is obvious and the cyclical slowdown in the US and now in Europe as well will slow down the cyclical component of energy demand. And this might help. But your question was 147, was it the peak? It was the peak for this cycle. It was not the peak for the next cycle. I believe we will see in the downturn of the economy that in my view extends into 2009 for sure, probably even into 2010, we will see a level of oil prices below 100. But we will see in our lifetime, on a level of oil prices of over 200. It's very obvious that the emerging world is going for more comfort, for more convenience in the households. They will have appliances, they will have a motorbike, they might have a car. Uh, they, after a while, will, of course, want to have air conditioning as well. If they use all those gadgets and have to, of course, build their roads and build houses, and offices, they will need a lot of cement, a lot of steel, and all this is absolutely energy eating. This cycle, how long will this downturn last? Do you feel uh, that we've started the downturn in the end of 2007 or the beginning of 2008, somewhere where world e equity markets mm -hmm. peaked? And will it continue for three to four years? Or do you feel things will be stabilized till 2009? Uh, I believe we should understand that this is not just a subprime crisis, not just a little blip in the financial market. I believe the correction we now observe basically is a correction of several huge bubbles. And one huge bubble is the real estate bubble. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a bubble in the United States. It is a bubble in quite a few countries. And the bubbles in other countries are even more pronounced than in the United States. In the last 10 years, in the United States, housing prices doubled. In Spain, they almost increased at a level of three and a half times. In Ireland, it was four times. In England, it was two and a half times. In Australia, two and a half times. So there was more of a bubble in many other countries than the United States. And we all only talk about the United States real estate problem. We have real estate problems elsewhere. Real estate problems need quite some time before they are corrected. We have seen that in the past in a number of countries. Uh, in countries that have a strong demographic development, a strong population increase, even if you have too many houses today, in a few years, the increasing demand will, of course, eat up the excess capacities. India is an example. China is an example. And the United States, to some extent, is an, ex is an example. I do not expect that this will last for five years in the United States. It may be over in three years as a consequence. But in a country like England, with not such a dynamic uh, labor force, uh, with not such dynamic income growth, of course, it may take five years. And in uh, Spain, a country with uh, a population decline, I expect it may last, as it did in Japan or in Germany, 10 years. And this, of course, then will be a drag on the economy for quite a while. And that's something investment bankers don't 
want to analyze because that's much too long term to them. They are just interested in five weeks or five quarters at maximum, but not in five years and certainly not anything beyond five years. Mm. I know you've been touring Asia and right now currently mm -hmm. are touring Asia. What, how have you gauged the slowdown here? First of all, uh, when I was here last year in August, um, I indicated that I'm quite hopeful with respect to uh, the strength of the economy in Asia. But I already indicated that some countries that are factually the workbenches of American companies, in the IT sector, for example, in Malaysia or in Taiwan or in the city-states like Hong Kong and, and Singapore. It's very obvious. If there's a downturn in the US, there's a downturn in their subsidiaries in those countries. Mm -hmm. And therefore, these Asian countries, of course, will be affected. But the giants in Asia, the China and the India, of course, they have a strong domestic market and they have a lot of interaction with other Asian countries. And therefore, the relationship with the United States, while important, there is one thing that I didn't see last summer and I didn't expect last summer, the inflation acceleration mm. in Asia. And I know inflation is not, it is partly controlled through price controls in some countries, uh, through subsidies in other countries. Uh, therefore, the full price momentum is not shown in headline inflation in quite a number of Asian countries. And still, inflation in many countries, India included, is double digit. In some countries, it's beyond 20%. And this is not something that can be accepted. There will be macro policy corrections, and I believe it will be basically monetary policy corrections. There will be an increase of interest rates. We have seen that today again in Korea, for example. There will be other countries, there were other countries. And those who have not done it will do it, I believe. And mm -hmm. if they do it, of course, it will have an impact on their exchange rate. The exchange rate will be stronger rather than weaker. This will help the inflation to be more moderate. But at the same time, of course, it is an important factor to dampen the domestic economy. Therefore, I expect this to dampen the economy. In the case of India, I expect that the southern part didn't get enough rain and therefore, because of the lack of rain, there will be not as much agricultural production as you would have expected normally and therefore, there's a bit more of a slowdown in 2008 than it would be otherwise. Can we hold 8% on a GDP, Dr. Walter? We will go below 8% probably this year already and certainly next year. But again, that's not a bad thing. Uh, if you grow at 7.5%, that's a good rate. I remember my days when I came to India and all the officials told me I should not worry about India. They sustainably grow at 5.5% and it's good. <laughs> they were so complacent about 5.5% and therefore slowing down to 7.5% should not be considered a catastrophe. We become over ambitious over time. I think yeah, exactly. uh, good growth has spoiled mm -hmm. us. Yeah. So. But I'll come to RBI's policy and you said mm. most of the moves should be monetary. I think you made a statement saying that Asian economies will continue to hike in interest rates this summer mm. and into autumn. Yeah. Do you think there will be one more uh, rate hike happening in India by the end of this year? And after that, things will be in control. So inflation will moderate in the first half of 09? The problem is that I don't exactly know how much uh, the inflation was controlled by artificial measures as I indicated subsidies and whether these subsidies can be continued considering the burden for the fiscal deficit many of them cannot be continued if then headline inflation appears to be even higher if, mm -hmm. if headline inflation inching up from 11 to 12.1 percent would inch up to a bit more uh, despite the fact that the international oil price has started to decline then people might be very nervous and might not know how to interpret the situation. And then the poor reserve bank could be in a very difficult spot. Mm. In a period when they observe that there's a slowdown of the economy, they then would feel compelled to even increase rates more. The reserve bank is a lucky bank because they started increasing rate early, other than others, different than others. And I, I really congratulate the, the central bank that they did it. Uh, in a situation that is not easy politically. Uh, there's a lot of tension. There is an election looming next year. And that's not exactly the most ideal time to pursue policies that are painful. <laughs>